Hello, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for your astrological overview for week commencing the 29th of August. This week begins, much as last week ended, with that terrific alliance between Mercury, Venus and Jupiter in the sign of Virgo. However, things are set to change, because on Tuesday, Mercury goes into a retrograde and Venus moves into the sign of Libra, one of the two that it guides. Venus in Libra is very much about fashion, it's about style, it's about being classy in our approach, and no little about charm. And these are all things that are going to be coming more to the fore in the 28 days that Venus makes its way through this sign. But with Mercury going into retrograde, does that mean that, that its link with Jupiter becomes almost immediately not positive? No, it doesn't. Mercury retrograde, of course, has got quite a mighty reputation, just like Saturn return. But Mercury retrograde happens three times a year normally. It's actually happen, happening four times this year, which is less usual, in that we have a two-week retrograde at the very end of the year. However, this third is in the sign of Virgo, which is all about precision. So we're really just being encouraged to make sure that we don't make assumptions, which we can do when Mercury and Jupiter get together, because they can almost make us think everything will work out fine without too much effort on our part, and that's something we must strongly resist. But if there is something you're working towards, the facts and figures of it, the details of it, are things you can't uh, second guess. Don't make assumptions, don't jump to them either. Drill down into the detail and make sure that you're fully informed, particularly around any big issues, and I still think you can gain a benefit from Mercury's alliance with Jupiter. Now, the start of this week also sees Mars and Saturn continuing their conjunction. That's going to go on till Wednesday. And then Mars punches three and moves into Sagittarius without being held back by the cloying link to Neptune, which is very draining and potentially deceptive in a right angle to Mars. And whilst Mars and Saturn can work very constructively together, it can lead to a lot of frustration, and it is still quite a limiting influence. So Mars breaking free brings to the fore much more the free-spiritedness of Sagittarius. So we have all this energy in Virgo still, apart from Venus, which is relocating into Libra on Tuesday, and we also have a solar eclipse on Thursday. Yes, this backdrop is going to last for the next six months. A Virgo backdrop, detail, being prepared to work at any kind of organisation, greater purity in what we eat and drink. I do feel that there are going to be some breakthroughs around health, care and medicines on the back of this one. But because of the role of Saturn, which squares this eclipse, and Neptune, which opposes it, it's not going to be an eclipse without some baggage. It's not necessarily going to be plain sailing. And of course it will work on a solar pair with the lunar eclipse on the 16th, which is in the sign of Pisces. I really see this as a battle between position and more like inspiration or hopes. Pisces is a very shimmering energy, whereas uh, Virgo is about, yes, it's about everything being neatly ordered and working efficiently. The two aren't necessarily going to work side by side, but we need to find a way. Actually, what is important is all of this eclipse stuff is all mutable. Therefore, it's flexible. It can wash around. It's not stuck like a fixed sign eclipse would be, for example. So stay open-minded in your approach and be aware that flexibility will still be important with the detail and with the discipline that we do need a little bit of flair and inspiration to go with the hard work and perspiration of very dull and a bit uh, monochrome. So look to keep adding what you can to situations, but how you organise them is crucially important. And because Saturn in Sagittarius is all about knowledge, that's where we need to be fully informed. And if we're fully informed and our delivery, the way we structure things, is very precise, then things have a great chance of standing the test of time. But if you're looking for a more playful, more engaging and dynamic vibe, the move of Venus into Libra is low. And also, uh, 
Mars shrugging off those restrictive energies too. So there can be some playful stuff too. Otherwise, it would become all rather dull for us all. Thank you for joining me. Good luck and goodbye for now.